A lot of the things I've done, people say, oh, it's impossible, you'll never be able to do it. I'm just going to believe in my idea that it's possible, even though everybody else is telling me it's not possible. My name's Stephen Wolfram, that's easy. I usually say I run a technology company. That's my, that's my short version. I've done a bunch of things in my life. Four big projects. Mathematica, New Kind of Science, Wolfram Alpha, and Wolfram Language. So I grew up in England, mostly around Oxford. For some reason, I got interested in science when I was really young. I think I even taught myself to read out of science books that had, you know, picture, caption type things. I first sort of uh, met a computer seriously when I was 12 years old. By the time I was interested in the space program, it was the 1960s, and that was kind of the hot, exciting thing. Then I got interested in kind of what were the foundations of all this stuff, and that got me into physics. By the time I was probably 13 or so, I was sort of college competent at physics. And for that, you need to do math. And uh, mostly I found this math kind of boring, and I was like, I just don't care. And so I got interested in, well, how can we, how can we do something other than have to work all these things out by hand? And I thought, gosh, we should be able to use computers to do these things that seem very mechanical, that I don't like doing as a person, um, to, to, do, to do math and those kinds of things. At one point, I was probably like 19 years old, and I was writing a physics paper every two weeks. You know, at the time, I sort of got a reputation for being really amazing at doing all this kind of mathy stuff for, for physics and so on, which was, you know, people just didn't understand that it's not me, guys, it's just a computer. At that time, I sort of thought, I know how to do this now. There are other things I, I, I want to think about, more ambitious kinds of things I might do. First thing that I wanted to do was to figure out how to build a tool that would let me do uh, sort of more efficiently, more of the same. I mean, I suppose at some crazy level, a paper every two weeks wasn't good enough for me. I wanted to be able to, to do more than that. And I realized, actually, computers are in some ways more fundamental than the physics that I'm studying. But at the time, I was thinking, you know, physics is the thing I'm trying to do. Computers are just a way to help me get there. So, you know, one thing I've been interested in doing is building both uh, tools and structures that allow me to go from sort of ideas to reality. Um, and so one of the things I've done is build technological tools for that purpose. The other thing I've, I've done is try and build a company that lets me in the best possible way do that. And I've been lucky enough to have a successful private company for now 28 years. What we're trying to do with Wolfram Language is to, it, it sort of follows the trend of technologies, automate as much as possible. Get it to the point where humans can describe what they want the computer to do, and then the computer will figure out as automatically as possible how to actually get that done. One of the goals is, if there's a question that can in principle be answered on the basis of knowledge that our civilization has accumulated, make it possible to automatically get that question answered. I sometimes say, um, the thing I like best is to build what I call alien artifacts, which are things which I don't think anybody else will build if I don't build them. Things which just sort of arrive, having been built, and people didn't expect them. I, perhaps it's some kind of uh, uh, perversity that I particularly like building these things where people say, it's just impossible, no such thing can exist, and nobody kind of thinks of it, and then turns out one can build it. And, you know, that's kind of, I, I get a kick out of that. One of the things that's important is figuring out what is it that you not only like to do, but are good at doing. I realized at some point in my life, I said, what, what am I actually good at? It's kind of this, this start from something complicated, drill down, find the fundamentals, and then do the engineering to kind of build it back up again. That, that's what I seem to be good at. 
It's very hard for one to know, you know, how far can one go, so to speak? What is your real, real skill? And, and sometimes, you know, people will say, well, I'm, I'm good at math. So it doesn't necessarily mean you should be a mathematician. Maybe there's something about math that is kind of the core thing that you really like. Maybe it's solving problems. Maybe it's uh, elegant aesthetic structures. Maybe it's doing well relative to other people in some measurable competition, you know, different kinds of things. There's some essential feature that is the thing that is really what's important to you about it. And there's often many different kinds of activities and occupations that really uh, you know, tie into that particular feature. And to get to that point, you have to develop a certain degree of I don't know whether it's confidence or arrogance to just say, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I don't really care what other people say.